everybody, welcome to Minding My Business Tuesday Talks with myself and Daniela. I like the hair. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're just going to wait for Natalie. How's your week been? Very productive, thank God. Thank goodness. All right. So while we wait for Natalie, Daniela, you want to tell people just hopping in what this Minding My Business is about? Yes. So we're here to help everyone elevate their life, their business, and uh, their mindset. Their mindset. Yes. I know you wanted to say bank account, but you're like, that wasn't I it. Know. But for- I was like- <laughs> Yes. Bank, but you will elevate your bank account as a result for um, elevating yourself. Like that's always a given. So welcome, welcome everybody joining. Thank you much for joining us today on a Tuesday. Just waiting to see where Natalie is. She should be on in one minute. She said she was running exactly three minutes behind. So what is your big win for today so far from yesterday? You said you were super productive. What does that mean? So my big win today was um, my alarm clock didn't go off in time for me to go to the gym, um, but I didn't let that hold me back as an excuse. I actually called my trainer to make sure that even though I couldn't get the full hour in, if it was okay, I could go in and at least get 45 minutes in, which I did. So that was... That's That's huge. That is so huge for you. Congratulations. That's like a big thing that you are definitely (laughs) like overcoming. I know. That's like that one thing that was holding you back. Yeah. And you know what? It's not the point of going to the gym. It's just waking up early. (laughs) I Yeah. And also like keeping your promise to yourself. Like we make decisions and we make like these sacred, sacred contracts to ourselves. But then when the time comes for us, for us to actually execute, when it comes to like us and ourself, we think that, and this is something I had overcome. I'm like, wait, but I have clients and they want to book during my workout times, or I have so much to do and I have this and I have to get these deadlines. And I'm like, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. everything is going to get done. You have to go take care of yourself because you're going to show up like 10 times better. So keeping those sacred contracts are just, you just build that confidence. Yeah, Let's definitely. See. Let's see. Mm-hmm. All know, right. Right now is like practice what you preach as well. You know, we're, we're pushing over here, mind, body, and soul. We got to show up for ourselves. Yep. We do. Let me make sure she knows where we're going. Natalie, I'm really excited about her. She has a network TV series she started during COVID to build community. Um, let's see where she's at. I don't think I see her in here. That's right. She'll be in her in a second. We can keep talking. All right. For those of you just joining, what's something you're looking forward to in regards to elevating your business, your mindset, and your life? We just got back, Danielle and myself, from um, All In, which is a huge um, event. And there's just so many powerful people, people there. And that was one way where we actually got to really just you and I even connect and build stronger relationships. And I know that's one of the things, like getting out of our comfort zone, going and taking trips. But even for me, I've taken the last like day off, um, day and a half, and I spent time at the beach and the ocean because I needed to reset myself. Yeah, I know um, on Sunday, I, you know, recharged by spending time in the pool with my kiddos. Um, I know Art's definitely feeling it though, because even yesterday we did like a free pop-up that, you know, we were providing value for our amazing um, people here in Phoenix. So we left pretty late as well. It's been, yeah, you know, event after event, but as long as we're able to serve somebody, that's what matters. Yep, I see Natalie in here, Zaddy's in here, perfect. All right, yes, our guest is on. Yeah, we have to take care of ourselves, and plus, you know, respect respect them when you're running low exactly you gotta charge yourself hey Hi guys. guys what's up what's up i made it yes congratulations welcome to this the is... winner circle 
Amen. That's where I want to be. The funny thing is I had to find my login because I'm rarely on this account. And so I'm so happy to be over on Natalie's network and hang out with you too. Y'all are so beautiful. So many great oh, things you're doing. Likewise. So happy to be here. I wish I could have a filter, but it's it's fine. It's Girl, fine. I don't know how to like do it. Just <laughs> being authentically yourself. You know, minding my business was really about creating a platform for women to come to who, if they're not strong and they don't have a community to really come yeah. here to learn how to either build mental strength, reclaim their personal power, elevate their mindset, their business, and their life. And we wanted to bring on guests like yourself that are doing amazing things in the community oh. and, you know, share that knowledge and have you just drop your gems so people can take away you know, just feeling better about themselves today. Yes. Well, thank you for having me, both of you. I've been able to check out your girlfriend, your partner in crime for your podcast or your live. So very happy to meet you. Hello and be with y'all today. Hi. Hey, Cousin Robin. Hi. My family's <laughs> pulling up. Hey, yes. Cousin Robin. Cousin All right. Robin. So Natalie, do you want to tell people or would you share with people um, you're with the Connect? To ne network. Um, originally, I was like, do I put the Connect Network up here? Do I do this? How I originally met you was I was on the Connect Network, and I was like, wow, this is really powerful. Where I met you, I met Sandy Glant, I met Stitches, and I was like, wow, these women, your energy is just so amazing. We had a call. I was like, we just connected, and yeah. your energy is just so beautiful, and you're just a powerhouse. So tell us a little bit about what you're up to and what you've created. Yes. Well, Tanya, girl, I'm rubber, you're glue. What you say bounces off me and sticks on you because I feel the exact and same so is way Daniela. about And so Daniela. We're all connected. Daniela, it's we're all of us, right? All the energy. And Tanya, you're right. When we hopped on the phone, I think usually our my calls are 15 to 20 minutes, but I think you and I were on the phone for maybe 45 minutes. We had a, a long time to visit because just it felt so good. So just thank you again for sharing your platform. And um, yes, the Connect Network TV, it is a place for women in business and female entrepreneurs to just really you know, get in front of a, a mass audience. Um, we have partnered with the CW Network and we broadcast a syndicated talk show on uh, the CW Miami, the CW Austin, and then the CW in the Twin Cities are coming back uh, in July with the new season. And I'm a former news anchor uh, for a local ABC affiliate here in Texas. I've been, I got out of media, I got married, had a family, have three children, I have twins, I have a daughter, I have a husband. <laughs> Uh, all the things and I just knew that entrepreneurship was for me and I decided to start this organization um, really looking for women to fill me up you know I before my past life I was a pink Cadillac driving sales director with Mary Kay and I was leading about 500 women in my organization but at the end of every night I was literally depleted exhausted and I just needed high-hanging fruit to connect with and learn from. So I really built this organization selfishly because I was looking for women that could inspire me and and really um, kind of show me the way because that's that's how you that's how you grow by connecting with others, learning what they have and and I meet amazing women every day through our television programs and through my discovery calls and so I'm I'm very blessed to know a lot of high hanging fruit now since we've started to connect. <laughs> that's amazing. So you did say that you did start it selfishly, but do you feel like there's a big lack of, you know, women entrepreneurship, um, mentorships and different ways for women to really level up and to be able to engage with other uh, high level individuals as well, women in particular? I do feel like there are a lot of opportunities out here. You have to go find them. They're not just going mm. to randomly knock on your door unless you're amazing because I'll knock on your door and I'll say, hey, you've got what it takes. Come be on my show. Um, but I do think there is a lot out here for people. Um, it's, 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 you are what you surround yourself with. If you're looking for greatness, if you're looking for excellence, if you're looking for high hanging fruit, you will find it. If you're depressed, if you're lonely, if you're, you know, addicted to, certain substances, you will find those things. You will find and attract what you desire in your heart, good, bad, indifferent. But I think you'll find it if you're looking for it very easily. 
Mm. So what is it when you, okay, so you were in, how long ago were you a, a news anchor? I was a news anchor from 2007. I was 25 when I became the morning news anchor for ABC. I got a very important job uh, when I was quite young. Um, and that was 2007 till 2010, late 2010. And then I got married on 11, 11, 11 and hadn't, <laughs> I haven't been employed <laughs> since then. So let me ask you this based on that. Um, yeah. Women have evolved and the community has gotten a lot stronger over the years. I feel like specifically more recently, um, especially powerhouse women, like when you were going through that phase of getting in a very male dominant industry, what was the type of tools that you used to really have strong resilience and mental strength? Mm -hmm. From being a news anchor during those, those years? Yeah. You know, I think the strength didn't come once I was in it. I think the strength really started when I was seeking that job. You know, mm. I can remember um, just every kind of piece of the journey, part of the journey leading up to becoming a, a real life news anchor, um, which by the way, if you're not familiar with news, like a news anchor is the person that sits behind the desk and they say, you know, happy whatever, happy Monday, they get into the news, they might toss to a reporter, the reporter's on the field, they're at the fire, they're at the bank, they're at the this, the that, and you come back to the anchor, the anchor kind of anchors the show. And that is usually a job that you get after you've been a reporter for several years, but I got super blessed because I think my mindset and the, um, I guess the dedication that I had to that specific vision never wavered. So um, before Texas, I lived in Miami and I was interning uh, <laughs> everywhere. I mean, NBC, ABC, at the local affiliates. And I even quit a paying job to go get this internship with um, NBC6 in Miami. And that was because I knew they had this program where they would let you sit behind the desk as an anchor. So I was actually a writer for Today in Florida, which is on WSBN Fox Miami. And I worked from like midnight till 6 a.m. I was always willing to take these crazy shifts to mm. get the training and the, 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 just the skills that I needed to stand strong when I got to where I knew I was going. So I, I don't think the difficulty was in the place of arrival. The difficulty, the mindset, the skills came in the development process, if that makes any sense. And, you know, also my senior year in college, I went to graduate from Howard University in Washington, D.C., but I had been applying and I'm like resilient. So if I apply for something and I don't get it, I will literally apply every year until I get it. Because if I want it, I'm going to get it because it's up here. But um, MTV was applying to MTV News. I don't know how old you all are, but if you remember that, you remember. Mm -hmm. This doesn't exist anymore. I know. Um, but I, <laughs> I applied freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, did not get it. Senior year, the woman that ran that news department was at our school for a career fair. And I remember my friend came to my dorm. She's like, MTV is here for the news fair. I was like, oh my God, I'm going. Go to the news fair, get hired on the spot for this position. I had 22 credits my senior year, and I had class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But I was dedicated to taking the Greyhound bus overnight after work from like midnight to 5 a.m. to New York every other day. And I literally did this for an entire semester. So it's mm. just things like that. Committing to that. I, I had to sleep at the YMCA. I would get to the Y 5 a.m., and I would get dressed there. We had a membership that was somewhere I could go and sleep i'd go into the locker room they had a couch sleep on a couch and get dressed and go to mtv and i did that monday wednesday and friday for an entire semester and that's pre you know the jobs and the internships um that happened in miami but i think the where you develop a lot of the mindset and the dedication comes in the journey because if i wasn't willing to do those things it wouldn't have been easy to be a news anchor that 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 wasn't difficult men women none of those things i mean it's just it's just it's where I wanted to be. So it was easy to perform in that space. That's amazing. Like your dedication sounds like you've had it since at a young age. What's one thing for our listeners, one key of advice that you would 
be able to give to keep that motivation and dedication up. I know that there's times that things get hard. I know for you, how you were saying, taking that Greyhound bus, that is, oh my God, that's amazing. I've never heard somebody with so much dedication, you mm -hmm. know, because that's hard. Uh, you know, people- That's like, commitment. By the time I get there, I'm too tired. Or, you know, that's <laughs> getting out of your comfort zone like that, sleeping at the Y, you know, that's dedication. So what's one uh, tip of advice that you would be able to give our viewers? Yeah, to say dedicated and motivated. Number one, never let your mind be idle. So you should always be learning. School is never out for the pro. And I guess before you keep your mind active and, and educated and nourished, um, you know, you've got to know who you are and, and what you stand for and what you want. And the really who, the, who you are and the what you stand for, I think that's really become more of a revelation for everybody over the past two years as we faced COVID, as we faced um, racial injustice. I mean, we faced a lot in the last several years. So I think that's an additional factor in mm -hmm. your motivation and purpose. But, um, you know, what do you want? You know, we have one little life. It's such a little short life that we get in this time. You know, if you think about the trees and just all of the, the things that will live beyond you and still be here in this space, but you are, not going to be here for very long so i think understanding what you want while you're here is step one and then believing in yourself that you can have those things whether it's a certain home or a certain type of husband or a certain um lifestyle you know a certain body a certain length of hair i mean as as it could go down to the littlest minute thing that doesn't even matter but you can have it if you want it big or little big or small and so I think understanding what your desires are, what are the desires in your heart? I think heart posture is important. How does your heart lie when you're all alone, not with the people, and it's just you and God or you and your faith or you and whoever, but what is your heart posture? I think mm -hmm. that's very important too. People don't really focus on that. We show up how we should be in this space or that, but what about when you're by yourself? What is your heart, heart posture? I think continuing your education all the time. I don't have time to sit home and, and read books because I do have a very busy life, but I have an audible on literally all the time, even though 10 a.m. gonna finish my book. I know, I'm <laughs> laughing because I was like, I actually sent you the hidden messages in the water. And you're but like, I gotta read it. I said I was gonna have that done today and I don't know, I'm embarrassed by that, but I'm- That's not, okay. Yeah on my desk. I'm going to read it. I've read a little bit. I have did read a few pages. I did read a few pages, but I have to read more. Um, Just look at the gotta, pictures. <laughs> you've got to keep your mind, your heart, because otherwise you won't have, you, there will, nothing will beat for it. You know, if you're not continuously connecting yourself to that purpose or that reminder of those missions of the desires that you initially said you wanted, your heart won't beat for it. You got to stay nourished. You got to stay prayed up. You got to be around the right people. You got to drop the low hanging fruit. You got to find the high hanging fruit and let folks vibrate out. That's the other thing. People keep around people that are not in this season. For those mm -hmm. that came during your low season, they're for your low season. You know, you can't get to the high season and the next level when you're still flocking around with the chickens. You know, eagles fly high. And, I, and that's another mindset. Are you an eagle? Do you fly high? Eagles fly alone. They don't fly, they don't fly in groups, you know? So you got to figure out who you are, what you stand for, and what you need to thrive. And, and hopefully all you need is really, you know, this and this and this. Because if you need everybody else, it's going to be difficult for it to work out when it's quiet. So when you say heart posture, would you be able to share with us watching what heart posture is and a daily check-in? Do you do daily check-ins with your own heart, heart posture? You know, I have a lot of time by myself at certain points of the day. So I have a very routine life. I check in with myself all the time. And it's not even at a certain time. It's, it's throughout the day all the time. Um, your heart posture is really what you stand in and who you are when no mm. one's watching. It's almost like integrity, but mm. a little bit deeper than integrity. It's like who you really are when no one's watching. It's your mm. soul. You know your heart posture. You know your heart posture. Those watching, you know your heart posture at home. You might go out and be able to fool folks at church. 
you might be able to fool folks at like those events and you might be able to even you know dress up and fool yourself when you go out and try to shine bright but when you're at home and it's dark you will feel your heart posture and you'll know exactly what that means for you Mm. How would somebody do like a check-in as far as like if they're not in their heart posture and they're looking to transition? Because that was another reason why we wanted to create this platform is sometimes in the space of growth, like you said, when you're hanging with the wrong crowd and you're in the space of elevating yourself, like elevating everything and you know you have to transition away from people and go in a space of, like you said, being an eagle and flying alone for a little bit, how would you... um how could somebody maybe transition or what advice would you give as far as like that goes? So I'm trying to, cause some people are going to get it. I think Danielle and I get it, but some people might not. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to have a shift in your heart posture, I think it starts with really getting still and really being honest with yourself. You know, it's so easy to tell everybody else anything you want them to hear. But at the end of the day, what's up coach by Jack? At the end of the day, that's, that's when you can really sit in yourself and admit who you are. So for some people, that admittance is easy because you got a good heart posture. You're, you're, you, you mean it when you tell someone, I prayed for you today. You mean it when you see someone on the side of the road and you'll stop and say, you know, can I pray for you? I mean, my heart posture has shifted so much. I'm at this space where I'm doing that now. I'm praying for strangers in the middle of the street. I never, ever, ever thought I would do that. But what the Lord has put on me and the responsibility and expectations he has of me and the blessings I've received because of walking in faith, there's a greater heart posture I must have to receive the desires of my heart, if that makes sense. So for someone else, that might look different. You might not have that kind of a spiritual relationship. Um, and your desires might be something that are more tangible. You know, you got to think about what your desires are. And it goes back to who you are. Who are you? What do you stand for? What, what, what do you live for? Is it about impressing people? Is it about having the best clothes? Is it about having the most expensive handbag? Is it about this car? Is it this lifestyle? Because when you go back and get home and... You're with your bag and your car and your, your stuff. Who are you? Mm. And I think the way you shift out of that is one by journaling. I think you can write down your feelings and energy throughout the day. What happened today? How do I feel about myself today? Um, you can ask yourself what, you, what you're proud of. What, what is something that you've done for someone else today? Um, how, are you, how are you giving back to your community today? Mm. I think there's a lot of ways that you can sit in yourself and discover your heart posture. Mm. And it's not only about, you know, what you're doing for everybody else, but what are you doing for yourself? Because you have to sit with yourself. You don't get yeah. to sit with everybody else all day. You got to sit with you. And if you're not Amen. building you up and see one of my hope, one of my guests on one of our shows, she says something good. And, and every day I'm just taking my notes because school's never out for the pro. She said, <laughs> I no longer pour from my cup. The cup is for me. I pour mm. from my overflow. See, mm. I pour from overflow. See, I used to pour from my cup. I don't pour from my cup anymore. I'm pouring from the overflow because I have to nourish myself. I have to bless myself before I can do anything else for anyone else. And once you start filling and keeping your cup, your heart posture, your energy, your, your mood, all of that shifts because you can find happiness in, in nothing, mm -hmm. nothing else around you. Happiness literally comes from here. And I've really watched so many people over the years that can't be alone. Mm -hmm. they, they literally have to hook their wagon to someone else just for their own happiness because they can't be their own company. And I think mm -hmm. if you are that type of person where you need someone else to laugh, you need someone else to go to the restaurant. I go, I can go to the restaurant all by myself now at this point because I'm satisfied with my own, my own um, company. I'll go, I'll have my little cocktail. I like fancy food and I will go entertain myself because if you're waiting for someone all the time to come with you everywhere or to entertain you, you're going to miss out on so much because what if they can't come, but you're, but you're ready to go, mm -hmm. you know? So 
those are just a few ways that you can really evaluate how you're living, who you are, and see if you're in need of a shift. That's Beautiful. amazing. Great advice. So you, I, not even in front of you, I can feel the confidence and the energy that you just carry around you. Like you have a crown on your head. How do you keep that same energy when you're faced with adversity? Um, for example, myself, I'm in real estate. Real estate's really a man-run industry. You know, my biggest mission right now is trying to change that, trying to get the women to stand up, to get that self-confidence, to be able to start their careers. What's some advice that you would have to go ahead and keep that confidence, that courage within our hearts? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. And congratulations <laughs> on your real estate empire to be. I know you're building big. It's going to be Oh, amazing. no, it already is. She's a fe seven-figure like business owner already. I mean, she sure. wants more. She's building her empire, but she's she's done very well for herself. Don't she's let her doing don't it. let doing don't it. let her modesty fool you. She's boss. <laughs> Good for you. Congratulations. That's a fantastic field always to be in. So amazing, amazing. Where are you located? I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, but my markets okay. are like nationwide in Georgia, Florida. I'm a little got my little hands everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> you go, girl. I love that. Well, I think the way to keep your confidence up, you know, I have sad days. Don't let me fool you. I cry. I call my mom. Mom, you know. Um, but I do, you know, it's like even an eagle has to come down for water. Mm -hmm. Right? But we get, we get right back up. But sometimes you're going to have to come down, and it's okay. But you don't stay down. You come down. You can have 24 hours to be sad, be mad, throw your little fit but you got to go right back up to the top period. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I want to do, and I always do is thank my parents because this didn't just start. This has been going on for 39 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are a parent out there, I would encourage you to uplift and really implement confidence in your children every single day. My kids, you can't tell them anything. Cause they already know <laughs> they know where they're going they know they're great the other day my daughter was like the lunar eclipse was the other day and we missed it and she was sad she was like gosh mom now i've got to go to the moon and i was like you can't go to the moon i was like that's the one place you can't go and she's like mom i thought you said i could be whatever i want i'm like oh god so i think it's really important to, to teach your children because it's your job it's no one else's mm -hmm. job it's not the teacher's job it's not the babysitter's job it's not Michael Jordan's job. It's not Oprah Winfrey's job. It's your job to build your children up and to build your family up and to build yourself up too. Now we can get some help along the way and get some, sprinkle some high hanging fruit, sprinkle some books, sprinkle some things, but that's your job. No one else's. And we have every tool in our tool belt to be great because we have phones, we have computers, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I think the other thing that I'll mention is that my, my dad, played in the NFL for 10 years when I was a little girl coming up. And so he always spoke to me in sports terms. And he used to always tell me, he still does, um, Q, I don't know why he calls me Q, you're a first round draft pick. And he always told me I was a first round draft pick. So from five, seven, something didn't work out for me. You're a first round draft pick, girl, I don't even worry about that. So I always had this mentality that I am enough. I'm, I'm, I can do it. I can have it. I can want it. My parents just always gave me that energy. And most of the times the terms were sports related, but I felt it and I believed it. And he was right because I am. See? So I think um, to keep and maintain your confidence, the first thing is you got to write down what you want. And I do a variety of things. I don't have that here, but one of the things I have is a weekly plan sheet. And every day throughout the week, I know exactly 5 a.m. to about 10 what I'm going to be doing every single day. And breaking those weeks and months and years and quarters down into goals. And if you can keep your eye on the prize to see what you want, that will encourage your confidence because you're working for something. You know, mm. something is out there that you need and that you want. And if you can see what that goal is, it'll remind you to not get discouraged when you got to come down for water. Mm. 
You mentioned earlier, um, gosh, there's so many things that both of us, I'm sure, like, want to, like, oh, go I... into. But then one thing that you say before we ask another question, but I was like, just yeah. one, one question, <laughs> one question versus 10 in one. Um, I, this is something, there's two things we do each time we ask every guest because it's so critical and people really, really always want to know these two main questions. They want to know a lot, but I'm going to ask one and Danielle probably knows the other one. Um, the one about shifting friends, when you know it's time to transition, what is that exit strategy in a, I mean, you don't just like cut people off, you know? So it's like, well, I mean, maybe you do, I don't know. But what is that space where you know that you need to elevate yourself and evolve and you're transitioning from this group of friends one day you make a decision and you're like, okay, I'm going here. So when you transition from your career and then transitioned into family and then transitioned into building this community, which is, I know, growing and expanding like every month, I see it growing beautifully how have you been able to do that transition of finding people more in alignment to where you want to go and letting go of the people you know are toxic for you, for your growth? Yeah. Well, I think you just really answered that question with one mm -hmm. word, and that is alignment. So what I have assessed over the last several years is the fact that I cannot be running around with people that I am not aligned with. It's mm. very simple. It's not even hey, difficult. It's Tanya. I'm calling a quick timeout intermission huddle. So bring it in. I'm personally inviting you to our inner circle. It's our monthly VIP meet up with other achievers just like us. Each week, I'm teaching everything you're going to need in order to be successful to step into the most elite version of yourself. I'm going to break this down play by play the tools, the systems, the strategies everything you're going to need in order to operate at higher levels mentally, physically, emotionally, and energetically. Look, we're in a season where the idea of full potential just isn't cutting it anymore. It's time to really be it now. So click the link in the show notes and I'll see you in the inner circle. Peace. If I believe that the sky is blue, very poor example, and you believe that the sky is green, well, you know, there's some differences that are easy to overlook, but it, when it comes down to morals, ethics, integrity, bigger, bigger bangs, that is when you can start assessing. Also, when people are bringing you down, when they're negative, um, I think those are other opportunities to assess. But for me, it's fully alignment. If we are not aligned, I don't even make time. And I used to. I would make time for everybody. Oh, this person, that, this person. I don't do that anymore. The other thing that you have to know is that you don't owe anybody anything. So if you decide I'm no longer aligned with you, you are not required to give them an explanation as to why they are going to vibrate out. They will see that they vibrate out. You will, you don't, you can show them better than you can tell them. I don't tell people anything anymore. I used to, mm. I would, I used to say, Oh, you know, I want to, no, I don't explain shit. <laughs> you are grown. I'm grown. I'm not explaining to an adult why we are no longer aligned. Mm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I don't, you don't pay me. I don't pay you. I'm not required to break down any information to you because chances are there have been several things that have happened where we both went home and thought, Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. things just don't happen overnight. Typically, there are several different instances that happen over time where you can size up, you know, if this math is adding up. Now, for a job, that's different. If I'm going to make a change and I have a, a contract or a financial agreement with someone, then, yeah, maybe I do need to share. And I don't need to share everything either. I'm no longer going to be working here. I'm going to put in my two weeks. So that's it. People are very confused. You don't owe anyone anything. You owe your, if you're married, you got a husband, you got a contract, you can talk to that person or your wife or whoever. And if you um, are in some type of agreement where there is some information and papers and documents outside of that, I don't break down anything for anyone. I am 39 years old. I answer to no one. Mm -mm, I don't do that. And, Coach and goes, period. Period. And here's an example. I had, um, and, and here's when that might shift. 
So I, during the whole last two years of COVID, and I had several people that got just clipped, cut, everything. Now, that doesn't mean I'm rude. That doesn't mean I disrespect you. That doesn't mean I stop following you. That doesn't mean I don't like your posts. It doesn't mean any of those things. It means you don't get to be in my energy. You don't get my space. Mm. You don't get my excellence. You don't get to have me for free anymore. You, you, you lost that privilege. That's a privilege. That's the thing we're confused about. We're confusing privileges with requirements. No, mm. you and my space is a privilege. I'm not required to give you my space. If you're blessed to have it, congratulations and vice versa. But it's an honor to be in one's privilege. So you've got to respect it. Wow, that was it. A, because was a it diamond. can be gone. That's it, Coach by Jock. That's earned. You've got to earn my space, my time. I have three children and a husband. If I'm spending even an hour with you, that's that means I really care about you and have love for you. My energy mm -hmm. is expensive. Yes. Now, here's where sometimes I can turn around. I was going to give you an example because during this whole thing, like the whole... Just last couple of years, I had a friend that made a remark that I found very disrespectful to the black community. She wasn't talking to me. She was put a post up. She, she, and, and this black gentleman commented on her post and he, in my opinion, said some things that made some good sense. And then a white male jumped in and said, you know, Black Lives Matter, this, this, and that. So they were arguing about this. Now, I didn't comment on that because I don't do that. But I was watching, and I was eating my popcorn, and I was drinking my tea, <laughs> like, mm, let me see what everybody's about to say. <laughs> so my friend hopped on and said, well, Ricky's right. Black Lives Matter is going to make us racist. And I thought, oh, Black Lives Matter is going to make you racist? Now, that had nothing to do with me. But see, we're not aligned anymore. <laughs> Because if there's anything in this world, in this example, that can make you racist, we can't be friends. Okay. Mm. Now, that's alignment. That's an example of alignment. So, because I've had all kinds of situations happen in my life. And tons of name calling. I have a white husband. But I've been called nigger by a lot of white people in my life. Because I grew up in a very unique community, blah, blah, blah. But that would never make me dislike white people because of what somebody else said. Is this mm. too long of an example? Because I am going all the way in right now. No. So, I'm just oh, saying. I'm just saying. Love it. But alignment. Alignment. So I just felt, you know, you probably haven't even had any personal instances that would even draw you to this conclusion. So I was very offended that anything could make her racist because I thought you were my friend. And so that's an example of alignment. Now, we never discussed it. She would call me, you wanna go to lunch? You wanna do this? No. You wanna go on a walk? Uh-uh. But it's been about two and a half years now and she continues to reach out to me. Now she knows something's wrong. I haven't explained it. But in fact, in the last several days, she was like, can we just have, she actually sent some pictures of our kids together because this was my home girl, like we kicked it. And I'm going to visit with her next week. Now, I'm not visiting with her because I want to be, you know, best friends. But I am willing to give her some information as to why we are where we are. Because if you speak on things when you're angry, you know, there's that things can go very, very wrong. And... I have enough respect for her still to not just call her and fuss her out, not just, you know, get on there and da, da, da. There's ways that you can handle things. And I did enjoy my time with her. We've had, we had a relationship. So I'm willing to explain to her my point of view on that. But that doesn't mean we're going to, you know, go right off in the sunset because it's all about alignment. So that's a mm. one long example. <laughs> alignment. Well, I think that went back to what you're talking about. Um, I'm taking some notes. Um, it went back to alignment, but first understanding what your morals, ethics, and integrity is and getting clear on that. And then you, you know what they are. And sometimes you already see the red flags mm -hmm. without having to 
go and teach somebody, like you said, like we're all adults here. You're, it's not your job to teach anybody but your children. That's it. Yeah. Um, you did in that. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 please. So you did mention that you are a wife and a mother, and we all know a successful business owner. How Thank is you. that you juggle everything? Like, you're like a superwoman over here. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the compliment, but really, truly, I'm not. I am learning every day. The Lord gives me the energy to put one foot in front of the other. And that is the secret to success. Whenever you just stop, you keep your feet like this, well, eventually you're just going to go sit down. You have to find that energy to keep on going every single day. Now, today, I am blessed with a fantastic team. I have um, a lot of people that help me in every single way. So as far as like the day-to-day -day things, I don't have many tasks at this point. I'm looking to even lessen the ones that I have. Um, but I have a fantastic business manager that takes care of everything, just all kinds of things. Um, I have a producer and script writer that takes care of all of the, the scripts for the show and contacts the guests and all of those things. I have, um, you know, a staff of three that just do the booking for the TV shows. I have six hosts. Um, and then I have um, my television manager who does all of the closed caption and then sends all the shows to the network. So I don't do any of any of those things anymore. But there was a time where it was just me and John, who was my TV manager, who sends all the shows, does all the closed captioning. And I was doing the scripts and I was doing the booking and I still take calls during the day. Um, but my recommendation would be to automate every single thing that you mm. can. Um, I don't, anything that I can set, not me, but my team can go set because I don't want to go set that stuff. I have way other things, mm -hmm. way other important things to be done. I need to be with the people. You need to go where the money flows. So if, if your income producing activities include the people, you go to the people. You don't make any money sitting over editing or writing scripts or, you know, wherever the money is, that's where I go. So if I can automate it or have it automated, we do. We have a lot of great services we use, like the traditional plan a leave, but now we're on Zapier. I'm getting to a space where we're literally going to automate our whole entire booking process for the show through webinars. Um, so basically we have a Facebook ads manager. I forgot to mention her, she's the bomb. Hey, my Arca. Um, so really we're shifting and now I've actually brought on a virtual call center. So they will be taking all of the calls. Now I'll take calls if I have to, but with my call center, they've been trained. So when this webinar starts building the, the booking platform and the guests for the shows, because right now my booking agents do that, I'm going to have them shifting into just a little slightly different space, but, um, that this this these Facebook ads, I'm going to be running my ads to promote the show and the opportunity and show some of our past guests. We've had so many celebrities, so many amazing just superstars from like Stormy Wellington, Mari Kachi, he's on um, Brothers, Master P. I mean, there are so many people that have pulled up. Tisha Campbell. Um, wow. This is LL Cool J's wife, Simone Smith. She came on and talked about her battle with cancer that not mm. a lot of people know that story about her. She's so amazing. Um, and then I also do some like directing from behind the scenes. So this is like Miss J Alexander. You might remember him from America's Next Top Model. TJ Jackson, mm -hmm. obviously from, um, you know, uh, what is that group? T3, J I'm so embarrassed, Lord Jesus. But anyway, <laughs> a lot of just different people. Um, Michael Jackson's nephew, um, that um, pull up. So it's, it's, it's difficult as we continue to grow these networks and these shows, we're going to be adding some new cities to the, the lineup. And I just can't talk to everyone, but everyone matters. So it's really important that we have these strategies and systems in place so people can have a streamlined process to get on the show, get set up, get the information, and be able to talk to a live human person if they have any questions. That's awesome. Automate, so, automate, automate. Virtual assistants, automate, business managers, all of that. Yes, yeah, so you've been able to delegate all, you pretty much the almost all of your business. So that gives you that leaves you with enough time to be able to pour into your children, spend time with your husband. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. My marriage and my motherhood have never been better. And all of these changes really fully started like the top of the year, like maybe October, uh, 2021, but 
we just kept building the team. But yeah, I mean, my home life, not that it was ever bad, but I was always working. I mean, always my husband would get home and he's like, you're on the phone, you're working, you're, you know, and your, your man does not want to see you when you come, when he's coming home, because my husband owns a very large investment firm. He does his own thing. Um, and he wants to be with me. He mm -hmm. wants to spend time with me. He wants to cuddle with me. He wants to watch movies with me. He wants to go on a date with me. He wants to do everything with me all the time. Mm -hmm. And if I'm distracted <laughs> with my business, he doesn't love that. And my job as his wife is to put him and my children first. And now it's just like, man, this is amazing. They say it all the time. If you can really give yourself boundaries, especially if you're working from home, give yourself business hours. That's the other thing. Like mm. uh, nine to five, nine to three. Don't be 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 10.30. That was me. Midnight. I would wake up for people out on Pacific Standard Time to take their calls and accommodate them. Girl, mm -hmm. no. See, uh-uh. Girl, I honey, no. do that. I'm not required to do that. I got rules and regulations now. But the thing is, if you can remove yourself from your business and your business can operate without you, then you have a business. If you gotta mm -hmm. stay inside that tornado every single day, it's gonna be hell. But if you can find a way to remove yourself and that's just that shit still operates, you won the game. That's yeah. the game. And so can you sell it? That's the other thing. We'll talk about that yeah. later. <laughs> Closer. So when you, I mean, you had just built this, but in the process of building, because I know for myself and I know Danielle is doing the same thing is we're bringing on team members, but the right people that are going to believe and align with the company, morals, ethics, values, and mission. Um, right now I'm automating. So I'm working every day to be able to build what you've built. Now in that process, when you are getting everything set up into the space of success of where it is now, so you can remove yourself, how are you still able to have, you know, do you still have a 95 and have those set hours when you were still building like the automation process? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm still building even today. I'm not, I'm not on the top of the mountain. I'm still learning. School's never out for the pro. I'm every day. My mind is is learning. Um, one book, and I, I I I can share this again. I might post it on our um, page on the connect. But um, one book that's great is the Four Hour Work Week by Timothy Ferris, mm -hmm. and he's amazing. Um, I would encourage everyone to read that. He shares so many different websites that automate things some that are overseas from the Philippines to even India um, that are working for $4 an hour, $6 an hour. Like it's incredible, which I'm just saying it's there. Um, mm -hmm. And so there are so many ways to do all of the things. I think we have to really just sit back. You got to do your brain dump. I have a YouTube on this, but your brain dump at the top of every month and it's everything. It's home, it's kids, it's business, it's groceries, it's, curtains or what because I need to get some new curtains for spring so it's curtains <laughs> it's like everything that matters and that's in your mind that you need you do this brain dump and you put all of this stuff on paper and then you get your weekly plan sheet which I mentioned a bit ago that's a seven day weekly plan so you pull what you want to do right highlight what I'm willing to do these things right in yellow these are what I'm willing to do so you transfer that to this weekly plan sheet and everything else you delegate, you know? And, and, and if you can get yourself a business manager and really start grooming that person to take the lead in your business and give her that power, give her that respect to run your business. I mean, what a privilege, what a privilege that you entrust someone so much that you would allow them to run your business. So yeah. you're really setting them up for leadership, for success. You're building your staff for them because I don't even really talk to them. I mean, I do talk to people, but not much. You guys can talk to Kentara because Kentara is the boss, you know, and allow them to feel like they are an executive in your organization. And um, I, I think that's, that's something that's really important because that makes that person want to perform well for you. Um, create a loving environment where people want to be together. We have weekly, not week, well, we have weekly meetings, but with my hosts and the, everybody, we'll get together once a month, um, get on the same page. What do we need to do? How can we shift? 
but even in the process of automating, I was still, and I still am, like today I hopped on the phone, um, I had a call, I, my day was great today. I went on a three mile run with my sons, my twins, they're four. Mm -hmm. um, they go to school from 12 to three. So we did that this morning, I was all healthy. Um, had some pineapple and yeah, um, sunny. <laughs> had a call at 10, had a call at 1030, both of which signed up already this morning. It's been a fantastic day, mm -hmm. but that's all I want to do because I got to get to the money. So who do I need to talk to? Who, where are my income producing activities? Now, there's some things you can't delegate. And I'm in a place right now where, I, although I am building this virtual call center partnering, nobody can sell my show like me. Nobody can sell my business like me. Nobody can break yeah. down what I have like me. So you, there's some, there's some things too that you want to keep because you might miss the relationship building for an yeah. example. And you I sold me publicist. for an example and I'm a hard closer. Well, <laughs> and look at us. I'm so blessed. See, if you were talking to the virtual call center people, yeah. we might not be here right now. We and most likely wouldn't. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is the other thing. I've really got to be, be, be clever with where I delegate that space because um, for an example, um, we're gonna be publishing a couple magazines like later this month, but one of those opportunities that I got was from a publicist that was on the call. She's like, this opportunity is not really for me, but I have a lot of clients that wanna get on TV and da, da, da. And she was like, well, would you be willing to let me um, publish you in a couple of publications and then you feature some of my people on your show? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, we work with all of these magazines and all of these, these media outlets, which one do you wanna be? And she really literally let me choose. Now, if she would've talked to the virtual call center people, I would've had that, that opportunity. So I say all that to say, um, you have to be clever and wise in all of your decisions, but there's a lot of opportunity for you to um, have some more free time and just figure out what that time is and what you're willing to do and what's going to make you money. Because mm -hmm. if it's sitting around writing and taking notes and looking at data, that's not, there's no money in that. The money is over mm -hmm. at the, the people. That's who has the money. Yeah. Not that business is all about money. But if you're not making money, you don't have a business. So we're talking about business. You got a hobby, right? Got a hobby. Yeah. Oh, man, you dropped so many diamonds on us today. I have, like, all these little notes. I'm Yay, like, I'm oh, so I know. honored to be here. This was such a privilege, truly. Such a privilege. Such a it's privilege. It's such an honor having you on. I honestly learned so much in this one-hour call. Like you said, like, you are, even the pros always learning, you know? That's, oh, yeah. you know, you always have to learn and bring it on and implement it. So I know I'm going to be implementing a lot of the strategies that you just um, talked about yes. today. Yes, One yes. more question. What mm -hmm. are your non-negotiable daily routine? You mentioned your exercise, eating your, you know, healthy food, but what are some of your non-negotiables that you know, if you miss in your day? you just are not operating at high levels. They're non-negotiables and you know they impact and affect you in a negative way if mm -hmm. you don't show up for them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, honestly, one of my newest ones is not having a cocktail or wine until after five because I have some free time and, you know, I can get to celebrating too early. So, um, mm -hmm. and that's more from an exercise perspective for calories too, but mm -hmm. cocktails after five, unless you're going to lunch with a friend, blah, 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 blah. You can, there's always exceptions. However, that is one thing that has um, really helped me like keep my weight where I want to be, keep my energy up. Next thing you know, you're like sleeping on the couch at eight. Um, so I would say cocktails after five if you can help it, unless you're celebrating something. And, you know, for me, I love, I got to do something for 30 minutes, whether it's running outside or doing a workout program. I have beach body. I do that too. Um, I would also go back to that weekly plan sheet. I know I've mentioned that several times, but that mm -hmm. is like every time I start my week and go through my week and don't have my weekly plan sheet at the end of the week, I'm like, how did I forget to do this? How did I forget to do that? Because you didn't write it down. You have to literally, and this is like back to goals and confidence. Like, how are you going to say you're going to be something and you don't even write it down anywhere? How's that going to happen? It's not yeah. real. It's not real. You it's don't true. It it's not written down. So that weekly plan sheet is incredible. And then, um, you know, just another thing that's been happening a lot since I've 
fully staffed out, and which I want to also add, this is my fourth year in business. So I uh, building the connect network. So um, congratulations. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, God. So I just want to say that there were so many years and nights of literally like, oh, I'm so exhausted. I'm so depleted. I'm not being the best mom. I'm not being the best wife. Like, bad energy, you know, because daddy's not happy. Mama's not happy. The kids wonder what in the hell is going on. It's like all these things. And it was all because I did not implement strategies and systems and professionals have strategies and symptom, uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. systems, see it. They have right symptoms here. too. Professionals <laughs> have strategies and systems. Everything should be written down. Everything should be very clear. This is laminated. I'm like how dramatic is that? But listen, you got to know who you are, know where you're going. I've literally created so many just different um, things on paper where here's this 10 years, here's this 10 years. And I did that for like 20 years um, from back to graduating from college till now. And I've been able to look back at things and I'm like, damn, I literally did that. Like mm -hmm. I said, I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. that, children, the number of kids, like everything was written down. Like my life is fully on purpose and it's because I've tracked it. An attract number grows. So whatever you want, you track it. Is that sales? Is that team members? Is it staff? Attract number will always grow. So you have to see what it is you want. So the weekly plan sheet, the workouts. Um, and then what I was going to say, what has improved since 2022, now that I've outsourced many things and have my team, is that my husband and I are watching so many shows. We're watching Gaslit. We're watching First Ladies. And then sadly, we're, I'm, we're watching the Kardashians. I can't help it. Don't at me. You know what, though? Them. They've got great strategy. I mean, they're billionaires for a reason. Why would you not be learning something from them? I mean, as long as the intention is like, okay, let me see their, their like what they're doing because clearly they've been in the media for a long time. I don't think there's anything. Everybody's bashing them. They're freaking billion millionaires. Look, girl, from I want to see – like. Chris has a martini room. She has this new home. It's off the hook. Mm -hmm. But girl, I'm trying to see because I'm out here about to get some. So I just need to see what it's going to look like as I set it up because the inspiration is everywhere. So it's up to you yeah. to go find it. That's so funny. Um, if you can leave the audience with one thing, because we talked about so many amazing things today. You dropped so many diamonds on uh -huh. these ladies and gentlemen. Um, if there's one thing that somebody could implement that you know is going to completely impact their life and it's something super simple, what would that one thing be? Sorry. Can you hear <laughs> me? Calling me? Yeah. <laughs> he must be, his nose must be itching. He must be like, my wife's thinking of me right now. Um, if I could share one thing that you could implement for success, did you say? For really operating at higher levels as a woman um, in a, um, just for their business life and overall mindset, one golden thing to, to, that they can implement today and take with them with all this information, um, mm -hmm. what would that one thing be to get started? Mm -hmm. I'll give you two. One, and it's things I've already Perfect. mentioned. We'll but take it. One thing um, is understanding and being honest about who you are and writing it down and what you stand for almost like your vision or mission statement but about you as a human being no one else who are you mm -hmm. and then two what are you good at what are what is there about you that you know that you got nobody can take it from you what is it is it is it momming is it cooking? Is it cleaning? Is it being compassionate? Is it sharing? Is it loving people? Is it motivation? Is it inspiration? Like we all, everybody has something. What is your God given talent or gift? And then deciding what you want to do with it. And you can do all that today. And if you just start with those three things, mm -hmm. writing them down and acknowledging it, I think the sky's the limit for anyone. But you first have to know, we, we figure out who we are later in life, right? Wouldn't you agree? It's like, oh, I'm 25 now or 30. Now I know who I am. The sooner you can figure out who you are, I think the, the 
the easier it will be to stand in your God-given assignment, because that's the other thing. We are all here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you live up to that purpose or reach, reach, reach your purpose, God has you here for a reason. It's up to you to stand and walk in that purpose. So yeah. your God-given yeah. assignment. And if you connect with yourself, sit down with yourself, check your heart posture, it'll be clear what that assignment is for you. Uh-oh, Daniela fell out. Come on back in, girl. Come back, no, Daniela. Oh, my gosh. She'll, so be, she'll be back. Um, no, I think that's beautiful. Something that's the first thing I work on with people is we set intrinsic goals. Intrinsic are your soul goals, your heart goals. And the, the faster you can get more clarity, clarity is what builds confidence. So the more clear you become on those intrinsic goals, those heart center goals, then you can kind of base every, every decision you make, um, every conversation you have, every person you allow into your life in alignment to that. So yeah. that's, I, lo I love that. Um, here's Danielle here, and then we're going to close out just all three of us together. Hey. Can't be missing, missing my, my girl. Your partner. She, my, partner my partner. My hey, partner in Ascension. <laughs> hey. Glad you came back. I don't know what's up with my internet. Like, it could be like your your um, room that you're in. Sometimes there's like drop zones. I might have to switch it up for the next one. But yeah. I was listening. <laughs> I was frozen, but was still able to listen. So that was amazing, amazing. Well, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. I know we it's like already an hour went by so fast. You shared so much value, and we're so grateful. I know you had to move a few things around to be here with us, so just know that it's very much appreciated and recognized. Um, well, my and valued. This organization is still around. If that, <laughs> if that counts for anything, with all of this, these new levels, I'm still disorganized at times. So thank you for still having me today. I'm very grateful for your platform. And I just want to say that your Instagram page and that red girl and that white is so <laughs> hot. It is so lit. It is so fire. It's gorgeous. I love it. I'm literally obsessed. Fantastic. I have a team. I have a team. You know, I have a team and I don't, I think the biggest thing is that um, we, we really do need support if we're trying to grow and expand we need to make sure we have the right people in place that are really out for our highest interest and that's why Daniela and myself wanted to create this platform of mining my business where we mind our business because only you know what's in your heart and what's your god-given purpose in life and there's no reason why we can't celebrate each other along the way and you know we wanted to make sure that you were celebrated because you're doing amazing things and you're you you're just amazing. So we wanted to celebrate you today on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. If I can, I'd love to share something I have coming up Thursday. I almost forgot. Um, you know, we've had thousands of women and men and celebs on the shows over the last several years. And this Thursday, for the very first time, I am teaching a free master class um, to show people how they can create their own television show and get it broadcasted on a national television uh, network. It is this Thursday. You can go to my um, link in my bio at the connect and find it. I'll make sure to update the link in the bio at Natalie's network to find it, but it's the connect online.com slash masterclass. And I am just sharing how we have been able to do that and generate a multi six figure revenue stream um, over these years with the power of media. It's changed the way that people um, view my excellence. It has validated and um, you know, really legitimized my entire business because I have these large networks that back me up and broadcast my program. So um, that is this Thursday. It is Media Mogul University. I will show you how you can connect with celebrities like every single one of these celebs. What time is it? 204. Oh. Thursday, it's at one o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Central Standard Time. So anyhow, check it out. You can register and get a link to get all the details. But even from my hosts, I knew none of these people. Before I'm gonna post it television. when I when I share this live. I'm gonna put Thank it in you. there. So go mm -hmm. ahead and mention it one more time. The Connect yes. Network. What is it? It's 
It's theconnectonline.com slash masterclass. Love it. Yes, Theconnectonline.com. We will definitely be tuning into that. Oh, thank you so much. I really believe anybody can have a show. If you have a podcast, you can have a show. If you're a doctor, you can have a show. If you're if literally a hairstylist, whatever you do, if you're a real estate agent, if you do insurance, you can have a show. And there's so much that goes into that. It's just, it's just really builds you as the expert in your space. And we use our, our media time to talk to women in business and female entrepreneurs. So yeah, and yes, you guys yes. are watching. Thank you're watching you now. You're watching the replay. As you can see, Natalie's just filled with so much information. So make sure you take advantage. It's free. You know, and I'll put the link, I'll put the link in the saved video. And then Paulina, we love you. We met you at All In. You're amazing. I'm so happy you love this community. This is for you. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Minding my business, elevating your mindset, your life, uh, of course, your bank account and your business. <laughs> we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you for sharing time with us. Bye. 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 Bye.